spring is coming. I've got proof. It's coming soon. And this may seem a little early since it's the end of February, but I want to talk about cutworms so that you have time to gather some materials that will help save your seedlings in the springtime when those little guys are out and hungry. So a cutworm is a small worm that when you pick it up, it usually crawls into like a C shape. And they can be a variety of colors from gray, brown, green. The ones around here are gray. They can also have like a pink tinge. There's a lot of different species of them, but they all do the same thing. They wrap around the base of your plant or even right under the soil and they cut, they eat through the stem of the plant and destroy it. I find I have the most problems with corn, the brassicas such as cabbage and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and that sort of thing, and lettuces. Those are the main vegetables that get chopped off from the cutworms in, at my place. So there's several different species of cutworm, but they all come from a night flying moth. Now the moths drink the nectar from flowers, wild or cultivated flowers. And then they lay their eggs on the soil, which then hatch into the larva. And the larva live right underneath the soil, pretty shallow. And so they, depending on the species, they're either going to eat below the surface and eat the roots of your plants, and the, the plant will just like wilt and die. Or they will cut your plant off about the base of it. They'll just eat around the bottom of it. Or they actually can climb up the plant and eat higher up on the plant. Now the easiest way to find them is like this. They don't generally bother carrots, but let's say this carrot was kind of looking droopy, not that healthy. I would be able to scratch around the bottom about a half inch to an inch down, probably more like about a half inch down, and I would find the little grub. Now I find the bulk of them at night when I'm hoeing in between rows. So if I'm hoeing in between rows and we've got some weeds going on, generally I will find some cutworms. They hide during the day but in the evening, they come out to feed. So they're up closer to the top than during the daytime hours. Now the moths, they lay their eggs in debris. They will lay them on dirt, but it's generally on grasses and debris, well, vegetative debris that's been left in the garden. So if you clean it up at the end of the season, unlike myself, as you've seen, you're gonna probably have less problems with cutworms. So a toilet paper roll is four inches long. You wanna make sure that you have about an inch down below the soil surface and a couple inches sticking up so it can't climb over. I just take the last chunk of it and cut it off with scissors. And I've got the perfect collar for my plants. So when you plant your seedling, You're just gonna to wanna to plant it like normal and then take the cardboard tube and at least one inch goes below the soil because they live just under the soil. And that will protect, that will protect it from coming under and getting to the, root, the plant's roots. And a couple inches above the soil level protects it from climbing over and eating from the other side. And then of course, once the plant gets a little larger, you can just clip this off. Its stalk will get larger than the tube. Another method some people use, I haven't used this myself, is to put a toothpick on each side because some species of cutworms actually wrap their bodies around the plant to eat it. This would prevent a cutworm from wrapping its body around the plant, but some species actually cut the plant off at the base and some grow up the plant. So that's why I like to make the collars for the plants. I just feel like it works best for the kind that I have. Another method to get rid of them, especially you have quite a few, when it's time to water your plants, if you just absolutely soak the soil around your plants, like soak the soil, sometimes they will come up to the surface because you're drowning them basically. 
Okay, so last summer I made a TikTok video showing a plant that had been damaged by a cutworm, but not dead. And I was trying to figure out how to insert it into this video, but I couldn't. So I'll leave a link to that as the first comment. So start saving materials to battle those little guys. And that's all I've got. So until next time, see ya.